Hello, 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 and welcome to the RIP 28 Podcast, the RIP 28 Podcast. This is a podcast where a few good friends can get together and we can talk about a few good things. Now, some of the things we talk about, you're going to like. Some of the things we talk about, you're not going to like. But we're going to keep on talking because that's what we do. I'm your host, your humble host. Slot of sports guy, Slot Williams. I'm joined by a couple of my homies. We'll start off in the top left. Look to see Nez. What's going on? Nez in the building again. Let's get it going. Got an a interesting topic that I think will be beneficial to many people. So I'm uh, excited to learn more myself. We're going to go over on the other side, the other side, the educators, educator. What's going on, LBZ? What's going on, man? It's BZ the Great, the educator's educator, man. Just here to be educated by one of our great panelists. And down, we got our local hero, our local hero, the firefighter himself. What's going on, Mr. Ashford? Hey, how everybody doing? I've been ghost for a little while, but I'm, I'm coming back for you. I hope everybody had a good day today. And let's get into this topic. Glad to see you, Uncle. I like that shirt he got on, Capital Strong. I like that shirt. Great, that's a great year. That was a great year. Well, Not better than 99. Oh, Lord, and Lord, and Lord, and she's starting off wrong. Well, <laughs> speaking of she starting off wrong, we <laughs> have a guest today. We have a special, special guest, the one and only Miss Courtney Young. Now, most of us, we have known Courtney for a good little while. We know Courtney for a good little while. Courtney does a lot of things, but today she is going to help us on our topic for the day. Um, we like to talk about a bunch of different things, Courtney, man. We, we go from righteous to ratchet very quick, in a minute, in a second. But one thing um, the, fellas, the fellas decided when we said we were going to do this, we wanted to help educate the people every now and then. We want to help people out. And so the thing about it, we all think we know everything. So when we have something serious, we say, well, we need to go and get an expert. And, and, and Courtney Young, you fall under that expert first. So I, I want to give you a little bit about Courtney for those who don't know, who don't know uh, who Courtney is. Courtney is a former classmate of ours, but she is the CEO, the CEO of Foresight Communications. Foresight Communications, that is what Courtney's in charge of. Now, Foresight does a whole lot of stuff. I can't even tell you everything Foresight does. But the way Courtney's going to help us out today, Courtney's going to help us, because this is our business podcast. We're going to talk about starting business, staying in business, getting contracts, doing all that. And Courtney is going to help us out. So Courtney, introduce yourself to the world. So thanks for having me. It's good to see you all. Um, uh, like you said, the name of the business is Foresight Communications. Uh, I started the business in 2005, so we just celebrated 15 years in business. And we do our marketing, public relations, program, and project management. And we work with municipalities, aviation, and tourism authorities to do um, all of the things we listed, plus uh, we specialize in minority business outreach and development. So typically when those agencies or entities are looking to get more minorities, women, veterans, local small businesses engaged in the process, they call on my company to come in and help their, um, put their strategies together and usually to, to do the outreach. So that's what we do. So since we learn it from that side, we try and be a resource um, to the community whenever we can, because the more you know, the easier the process is for you. So thanks for having me. My first question to you is, is it a nonprofit organization or do they have? For my, for my business or for the business we work with? Either one. So my business is definitely not nonprofit. We are a for-profit mm-hmm. business. Um, mm-hmm. And typically speaking, uh, most of the entities um, that we work with are looking for for-profit businesses. Sometimes, maybe like in tourism, you look they're looking for like nonprofits because there are government dollars that are already um, allocated to them that they can give that money away to help develop um, 
ent- projects or or small organizations mm-hmm. um, that are in the local areas, but typically they're for profit businesses. Yep. Hey, hey, Courtney, how did you get into this? How, how did you get into this line of work? <laughs> so, um, I always knew I was going to work for myself. So I'm the fourth generation entrepreneur, a fourth generation entrepreneur on both sides. Both my parents were entrepreneurs, my grandparents, my great grandparents. So um, it's a long line of people who have worked for themselves. And in some cases, but most of them had brick and mortars um, or they had like physical businesses. So I was the first one to have a virtual business um, in our family. And so that was different and that was new. Um, But I kind of, I wanted freedom. I wanted the freedom to be able to choose the work I did and who I was going to work with and what time I was going to do it. So um, the personal freedom is really why I did it. But along the way, um, I also love helping people. I mean, you guys have known me a long time. I mean, anybody that knows me or Googles me or any of those things will always find me attached to some sort of community service or giving initiative or project. So this was an opportunity for me to be able to bring the two things I love the most, my personal freedom and being able to help others kind of into one world. So that's why I started. Hmm? Let me hold $200. Let me hold something. I got you. <laughs> I'm going to need 40 back though. I got you. got 20 to need 40 back. Hey, now, 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 I, got a, I got a question for you. You had that lemon pink back in high school. <laughs> I got a question for you, Courtney. Uh, okay. Me, myself, I've kind of fell into my own little uh, small business this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it was just out of, it's been more of a hobby for me mm-hmm. most of my life, but now it's starting to be productive. Mm-hmm. And I just would like some input on how I could make it better as far as, I mean, right now I've been doing some advertisement and stuff on like Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. But what, what would be some pointers you can give me to help me expand? So to expand, um, so with any business, um, if you are looking for it to, as you said, transition out from a hobby into a, a, um, a longstanding business and something you want to keep for a while and you want to grow, um, you want to make sure that you are setting it up like a business. So you want to make sure that you have all the basics set up. And I'll run through those real quick just for anybody else who may not know those things. And you may already have them. But you want to make sure that you, you know, you get your a tax ID for the business, which is free, right? Like you can go online yourself and set that up or find someone to do it. But you want to get a tax ID. You want to get a bank account. Those are the things that are important initially. And I know that doesn't seem like it's relative to like how you market your business and grow. But as your business is growing, it's very difficult to be able to go back. So once you start moving and you get busy and doing things, then you got to go back and get those basic foundational things done. You just run out of time because it's only 24 hours in a day. So for whomever, for you, if you haven't done those, definitely get those things done. And to your point of already marketing and putting things out there in social, social is absolutely the way you want to go right now between social media and word of mouth. Those are the two best tools that you'll have. Um, I would just encourage you to look at a, like a strategy and how you do it not do it haphazardly like you don't want to do you know an ad today and then don't do one for six months or do you know do an ad on um if your audience is like a more mature audience like 50 and over for what you for your business you definitely you don't want to be on instagram versus facebook because they're going to be on facebook not instagram so mm-hmm. take a look at depending on who your audience is and you kind of have an idea of who that is already you definitely want to be able to facilitate the right social media channels in that space. So I would do that. I mean, I would look at, you know, who your audience is and from there decide what you, um, you know, what you need to do and who, where you need to go. So tell me, who's your audience? I can tell you what that is real quick. Um, <laughs> what did you say, Chance? Say that, please say that louder, Chance. Say that one more time. I said, it would have been nice if you told us what your business was. Oh, my bad. I, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Well, I am, I guess it can be kind of considered a handyman business, but I'm more into woodworking. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do remodels for homes. Uh, I build furniture. I mean, so, I mean, I guess my my demographic is, is wide because anybody that's a homeowner or anybody that really needs anything, I mean, so I guess that's why I was on both. I've been doing both. 
So what's been making you the most money then? So when you think about how you're going to build your business and grow your business. So like uh, Sylvester said, like my company does a lot of things. So when people ask me, like, what do you do? I'm like, what are you interested in? (laughs) Because it's much easier to kind (laughs) of drive them down that path than, hey, let me tell you about this because it may not be interesting to them. Right. So Mm -hmm. if you are, um, if uh, your, your business is, is making the most money and having the most, um, you're getting the most opportunity in a certain area, I would focus on that area. Like I would focus on like, making that area be the thing that you're highlighting the most because that's what's going to drive you the most. And typically mm-hmm. you want to look at the things that are going to give you the most profit with the least amount of time. All gotcha. things are not always considered equal, but that's typically where you want to look at it. And then you look at what you can build around that to be supportive. So if it was, you know, if it's like, um, like we're seeing now, like if it's, it's something in the electronics or hanging TVs or like what we saw before when it was like the, um, the patio that was yeah. built even before, you know, if it, whatever that thing is, you really want to put your, enter, your time and your money into promoting that thing. And then if other things can come with it. So if the big ticket item is building the patio or building the fence or the deck or whatever, then the bonus things can be hanging the TV and hanging, you know, doing electrical work on the inside. So that way you're not losing or, or even the carpentry work is a big thing, but whatever that is, promote the big thing and then use the other things as, um, as supporters to that. That way you can get the biggest bang for your buck um, mm-hmm. out of the marketing space. And you'll probably get the best. You'll, and you also need testimonials. That's something important too. It's good that you have Facebook, but if your clients don't mind talking about how amazing you are, get them to talk about it and let them talk about it as soon as they see it. Like, can I record that? Do you mind texting that to me <laughs> right then? <laughs> like, don't be like, oh, let me let it settle in. No, because a week from now, it's going to feel different than it did immediately at the moment when they saw the big reveal. So definitely do that too. That will be helpful in growing it. Okay. Thank you. Question question for you, Miss Courtney Young Winfrey. Um, <laughs> can you tell me what were some of the challenges you faced as far as launching your, your business, your own mm-hmm. business? Because that's a big risk to step out and, you know, have your own company mm-hmm. and, that's your way of supporting yourself. So what, what were some of the challenges and how did you get over those challenges? Um, so challenges for me when I started, I was young, I was 23. I was a black woman in a world with a lot of um, non-black people who had been in the game a lot longer than I was. I'm mostly white men. Um, and, and I didn't have the kind of money they had. So capital. I mean, I went from working in a corporate job for a couple of years and that job, it was like, I knew I wasn't going to do that. So I, I was like, it's time for this to be over and move on to the next thing. So I saved some money and I had some, my family was very kind, but I didn't want their money because I didn't want them to tell me what to do. So, you know, you have all of that that goes into that. So being young and being at the table, I've I still, even where I am now, 15 years later, I'm usually the youngest person in the room with decision makers. So it's now about, it's always about getting them to see that I am, I know what I'm talking about. So um, it's, it, that was probably challenging at first um, to really get people to trust my uh, professional advice um, because it comes from not just, it didn't come from all the years of experience. Some of it was just instinct. And so just like, you know, in any, many other things, like your instinct is what guides you down that path. And you can't really quantify that. If they're like, show me the research. It's like, I don't know. I'm just telling you it's going to work. Trust me. So um, that was a good, that was, I mean, that was a challenge initially because I was so young. I mean, and then as I got older and as my ideas grew and as my business was growing, there were more things that I wanted to do, but they all cost money, right? And so even with money, it's like, hey, like that's a lot of money to be able to, pay for all the things you need up front and be able to live so it was a little give and take in there so i'm obviously super sympathetic to people who are in business and trying to figure it out and they just don't have all the money up front it's like well what's going to make you the most money so that you can bank that and then use that to build your business so getting started that was probably the biggest thing so maybe and so age is one thing but it's years of experience more 
So starting a business, you got a lot to prove when you just get in the game. People don't notice you legit. They're trying to figure out what it's going to be. They want it to be, you know, they want you to be like everything for them. And you want to be that. It just don't always work. So those are most difficult for me getting started. Um, so I heard I heard what you said when you kind of explained what you do, but mm -hmm. I don't really get an understanding of it. So let me let me put this scenario together and see how you can make it work. Okay. So say say I have a a, a lawn care mm -hmm. business. Say I cut grass and trim hedges and do stuff around the house and stuff like that. And I wanted to get that going as a as a business. Mm -hmm. So would I come to you and and you're like advising me on how I should market this or, or what or is it more to it than that yeah no so like you start your business and um i would give you the same things i just said to you right like mm -hmm. how do you you know have we set up the basic parts of the business how are we going to set it up what are we going to do then the next part of that then i'd be like all right so who's our audience right so just like i was asking james like you know who is the audience that we want to be to be your target audience that you're gonna make your money off of is it just gonna be like um right. residential hmm? everybody who got some grass <laughs> the air, see everybody <laughs> isn't your audience though so people <laughs> we think that because you're like everybody got grass i can cut everybody's grass but the truth is if some people's yards you're gonna go to they're gonna want to pay you twenty dollars somebody mm. else is gonna want to pay you 50 it's gonna be somebody else that's gonna pay you 150 and that's the yard you want to be cutting right yeah. like you want or maybe it's that you don't you'll get one 150 yard a week versus getting six fifty dollar yards a week so you you know you really have to look at where's that um where's your market and who you want so again it's a, a time versus money thing because time is you know time is money you right. know so who's your audience who's the audience is you know is your audience um like i said which one of those groups do you are you looking to build it how you want to build it out and where you want to be. So I would say, who's our audience? So if you say everybody who has grass, I'm going to be like, nah, not everybody who has grass. So how many, is it just going to be you? Because if it's just you, you want to have fewer, um, less work, more money, right? But if you got a team, you need more work to get you more money because then the quantity is going to multiply that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that that answers the question fully right there, but that gives you the the breadth of how you start that. And so from there, we make sure that your marketing is on point. You know, you can't, even in these COVID times that we're in right now, you know, you may not, you may have contactless um, relationships with clients, but it doesn't mean you can't leave a card on their door or a door hanger for them to see and get to know your business. And one of the things I think is like the best thing that people are doing right now with uh, residential care businesses or residential services, whether it's housekeeping or um, babysitting or not really babysitting, but like housekeeping, lawn care, those, um, like repair work. So James, this is for you too. They're mm -hmm. doing yard signs, like in the front of their client's uh, residence while mm -hmm. they're there. So not like you, it's a sign you want them to keep up for forever, but while you are there cutting the grass, you have a yard sign out that has your name, your business name and your phone number on it and maybe an email for them to reach you. So um, the same for even James, when he goes in to do projects, like, you know, he can be like, do you mind if the sign is just up while we're working on the project? And they're like, okay. And they may say no, but typically they won't mind because you're, it's not permanent. It's a temporary yeah. thing, but people seeing you do the work and knowing how to get you is the most important thing. So that's what I would tell you. If we were working that, together. That's amazing right there. That's something that I never really thought about. I, I never mm -hmm. thought about, you know, just putting the yard sign up. That's real valuable mm -hmm. information. Because how many yeah. times you ride by somebody's house and you see a lawn company out there cutting the grass and, mm -hmm. it may be, you know, it may be a mom and pop operation and they don't even have a sign on their truck. You know, mm -hmm. had that sign in that front yard saying this lawn cut by such and such mm -hmm. and, or Somebody's doing construction, they building the patio on the back of the house. Yeah. That's that's yeah, that's real. That's real good advice right there. Yeah, I, I, I definitely slowed down and took a picture of some numbers before. Seriously. Uh -huh. And even if you don't, and you know, sometimes people are uncomfortable, they don't want to stop and talk to that person right then, but it's an opportunity to be able to catch it real quick and you get to it, you know, when you when you need it. Or if you look over somebody right now, you're like, 
let me see how that yard looks, right? <laughs> let me see how this patio looks or this this whatever I'm building their building looks. So it makes a difference. And when you're at, when you even for you, James, even posting them, um, I would add watermarks to your work so that people don't steal your work and say it's theirs because people do that all the time, right? Yeah. So you don't have the benefit always of somebody coming inside the house to see the work you've done. But if you can do the sign outside, it's great. But then if you can go back even with your social and add like watermarks to your images, just your logo as a watermark on your pictures. Now those pictures are really yours, you know, not somebody else. They know it's legitly your work. And then also somebody's not going to come along and like try and snatch your picture and say it's theirs. Because people do that all the time. It's shady, but people do it. Yeah, if I've seen that. <laughs> Courtney, question. Right. What are some do when building your brand? What are some uh some things you want to stay away from when building your brand? So when building your brand, you want to stay away, number one, from trash in the competition. Because if it's your win, it's your win. It doesn't really matter who your competition is, because there is something you're bringing that's gonna be relevant to the space. Now you should know your competition. So building your brand is don't trash your competition, but get to know them intimately. Like, what do they do? How do they do? What, what do they charge? Where are they working? You know, what are all of those things? You know, what are the services they're providing? Really get to know the, your competition because that's going to give you a good gauge and barometer for how you should look into building and then how you should even maybe stay away from some things that you're like, not nah, adding me. Because you can see it didn't work. If it didn't buy for you, it's probably not going to buy for your client either. So I would say those two things. And then also you want to make it, you got to stay consistent. You can't be one of those people that's just like all over. Sorry, it's a football game there. But it's, you, you don't, hold on for me one second, y'all. Steelers must be losing. <laughs> hey, but um, hey, I did like that. Uh, what she was talking about, know who you were going after. Because I do get a lot of people, I go places, you know, and I'll give somebody a quote, and I, I pride myself on being reasonably priced, because I'm not the richest man in the world, but I know what I'm worth, mm -hmm. and when I go do a job, I just try to get what I'm worth, you see what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. I, at this point in time, I'm not licensed and everything like that, I'm working on that now, but mm -hmm. yet and still, I know my work is compatible with just about anybody's out there, Mm -hmm. so you know sometimes you'll get people you'll go somewhere and you'll you'll give them a quote and they'll be like man you charging that much is it it costs that much and i'll be like yeah, man, it, it does it costs yeah, that I'm much like, yeah that's just, that's just folks <laughs> being cheap, folks cheap you know? <laughs> hey james I, I will be hitting you up too i just got a new house i need a back deck oh i oh, got okay. you uh, we travel that's <laughs> your boy we travel he does all that right there with the, the wood top and all that. Look at that. That's a little bit of what, what James does right there. That nice uh, top. But anyway, enough talk about that. But, all right, about um, Courtney, that. Look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were still we were still on the don't. Let, let her finish out the don'ts, what, what you what you want to avoid. Oh, the don'ts, yes. Yeah. So, and when don't, um, you know, like don't trust your competition. Don't, and it wasn't, it was the don'ts about, and get to know your competition, right? Intimately. Um, and don't be all over the place. Stay, stay consistent. You got to trust yourself in this process. Like everything about being in business is about trusting your instinct. It is really not, it's about making money, but you have to trust your instinct to get you to the money. And it doesn't all come like overnight. Like you, st some people can start a business and they're going to make a lot of money really fast and then it'll level out and then they won't make much. And then other people start businesses and they kind of have to build into it. So when you are in that place, like don't get so anxious that you don't stay, um, stay the course in what you know is supposed to be for your business. Um, and so build that brand and make it consistent. You know, make sure that you have a, a the business name you've established and a logo and color. So things that immediately trigger people's senses to recognize this is your business and this is how it should be. And stay in that place, just stay there. Like give it six months, like plan your business out in like 90 day increments 
And but look at every six months, at least at least when you're starting your business and starting your brand, like what is it looking like? How far have I come? What benchmarks have I met? You got to keep yourself accountable to that. You can't just be in this place and just be like, I've been here for like five years and nothing's turned or I've been doing this for six days and nobody's called me. Like you got to give it some time and you got to stay consistent to it. So those are definitely things that I would encourage anybody who's starting a business to do in their brand. Hey, um, I got a question. A um, little free game, maybe. Um, okay. I love my boys right here. Mm -hmm. but, um, we do it for fun, for sure. But mm -hmm. do uh, want to make some money off of this at some mm -hmm. point in time. So what kind of advice would you give to like a podcast mm -hmm. or as an advertisement or, you know, being successful or getting it out there? So I would say... Um, some advice on building a podcast. Uh, you have to, advice on building a podcast. You have to make sure that you are promoting yourselves relentlessly. You got a lot of podcast competition, right? But what you bring is, is always going to be unique. Same as with the business. You, and you got to promote that uniqueness. So who are the contributors? You know, what makes each of you unique? And then when to make money off those things is going to be to drive the interest around those. So like Sylvester said, you have an educator, you have um, <laughs> your ad here too. You have all these interesting people that are a part of this. You really want to make sure that you're driving those interests and use those for people to then buy ads because that's those are that's going to get your follow those are going to get your following numbers up. And it's going to make sure that people are most interested in coming back over and over. So people put money into it when they know that people are going to see them. So you can do ads. Um, you can also do uh, other things. There are going to be other ways like um, ads on your podcast, but then also like um, when you are on other, uh, other promotional tools, um, there can be some bartering you can do that will get you bigger, a bigger following quickly. Because the goal for you guys is, has to be following. Like you got to get your follow. Your following is going to be where your dollars come from with that. So commercials. I mean, in the middle of the podcast. So if we're on it, you know, if it's on for an hour, you you potentially have you know three opportunities for commercials in the meantime that you can do quick little thirty second videos or fifteen second um, um, snippets of things. So those would be ways that I would think initially. And then the other part is going to be speaking engagements. So each, going out as a team or then going out individually through the company to be able to do that. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, you, uh, you said earlier that not only do you know you help, help uh, small businesses, but you help, um, help businesses acquire government contracts. Now, mm -hmm. Now let's go. Let's go with with Chance's uh, landscaping company. Now, now, what would he do? How how would you guide him or show him the right way to to speak with the uh, government to get government contracts, the minority contracts? So and the way to just get minority contracts just for the government, or you do you try to set people up with private with the private sector too, like you know some corporate like AT and T. Yep. So yep. So anything that's really going to be in the commercial world is typically. If you want, if you want to enhance your opportunity to get business, you want to get certified. So when I say get certified, obviously you need to have professional certifications, but you need to get minority business certified. So you can do that with a couple entities. I mean, there are, um, there's an MBE, which is the Minority Business Enterprise Certification. Um, that's typically that's through like the National Minority Supplier Diversity Council. Um, which sounds very long, but it's the National Supplier Minority Diversity Council. And they have an MBE certification that really drives you in the corporate world. So non-governmental work, but in corporate. So um, major companies that may need professional landscaping to come out, they get, they have um, minority participation goals be built into their business practices. Most of them, most of the large companies would, and even smaller ones are doing it now, but they have some goals that are in those practices that will, that they benefit because they want to get awards. They want to be recognized for we're helping the community and we're helping making sure that our business practices are diverse. So you get certified because that certification is how their numbers get counted. 
And so that's one way on that side. Now on the government side, um, it's very similar. You wanna get certified. Um, you wanna get, get DBE certified. So disadvantaged business enterprise. Um, and you do that through um, the US Department of Transportation and they do it in their local state. So, it, you know, there's the Tennessee DOT, there's Georgia DOT, South Carolina, Virginia, all of them have departments of transportation. Um, but you do those cert do that certification and that DBE certification is reciprocal among many other agencies. And the reason you do that is for the same reason you did on the corporate side, is because it counts for the numbers. And so the federal government has participation set aside just for minorities to be able to do their business. And it's intended to help you uh, get a leg, a, a leg up or get ahead of the, the other process, the other majority owned businesses and what that means, but it doesn't guarantee you business. So if you're with your landscaping business, what I would say is to get DBE certified. And then you have to use that to like promote yourself within that business area. So if they're um, major construction companies or if they are federal agencies that um, need, that have grass. If they have grass, they need landscaping, right? So you get to know the person who does their hiring and the same way you would court, you would court a new job is how you court contracts, but you got to get certified to do it. So if you're not certified and you're in business, you are missing out tremendously on opportunities. And the federal government is the largest contractor in this country. They spend more money with small local small businesses and local entities than anybody else so you definitely want to be in a position if you have a business that provides a service like that or even if it's in construction even if it's in transportation if it's in if it's in something and you can think of it it's probably an opportunity for you in that space but you want to make sure that you are also ready for your business to grow because those are not typically like small contracts, you know, they're not like ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar contracts. They're usually a one hundred thousand, two hundred, or one million dollar contracts, and you got to be able to float yourself until that check comes. So though that pay cycle is usually like, or that billing cycle is usually about thirty to sixty days. So you got to be able to cover your expenses until that comes. But if you can get through that cycle, it's one of the best opportunities you can have. And, and now I want oh, yeah. everybody listen. I want everybody watching and everybody listening um, to know, you know, Courtney's giving you a lot of game, a lot of free information here, a lot of things, a lot of things you can know. But she does have a business, you know. <laughs> reach out to her. I want you to reach out to her. And for those for those those of you on uh, Spotify or SoundCloud who are not watching the video, um, you can reach Courtney on uh, Foresight Communications. You can reach her. Her uh, website is www.thinkfsc.com. That's thinkfsc.com. You can uh, reach her on her phone. You can give her a phone call at 803-261-4180. That's 803-261-4180. I just let you guys know she does get paid for doing this. <laughs> they give you a little Thanks. bit of information for free, but to cross that finish line, uh, you might want to reach out to her and she can take it from there. But go ahead. What are you saying, Chance? Somebody had something? Yeah. I wasn't going to say nothing, but uh, I will say next time we all in Columbia, drinks on Courtney. <laughs> drinks on Courtney? We got it like that. I'm just out here working like everybody else. No, I'm just working not. like everybody else. But, but, but there is, mm -hmm. okay, but okay, now that's interesting that, that you, you know, you, you're giving some information, giving some game on how you speak to these, uh, you know, the different corporations and get these government contracts. But one thing you said that, that really struck home is, is like, whatever your business is, I'm pretty sure the government does something that, that your business can do, that, that your business can use. And, mm -hmm. So that that makes a lot of sense for, mm -hmm. for young, you know minority people trying to trying to find their way you know we're just trying mm -hmm. to find their way because a lot of this stuff we don't know how to get in you know a, a lot of these things is is grandfathered in with you know Jed his granddaddy did this for the company mm -hmm. and he not gonna tell he ain't gonna tell Chance how to get it. 
you know. We, I mean, you would you wouldn't want to tell either, right? Like it's guaranteed money in the space, but getting certified gives you the it pushes you ahead of that. And it's it's really like a marketing tool. It doesn't guarantee you the business, but it does put you in a position where if they want to keep the business and it's it has a minority participation goal, they're gonna to need to find you to come do the business with. Like that, that's what it gives you. And right. that's the that's how you have to see it. You can't see it like um, it's going to just guarantee you a check tomorrow. You see it in a place where it's gonna put you in position to negotiate on your terms with somebody who needs you because in order for majority owned companies to do business with the federal government, they have to have minority participation. Now, it doesn't always equal, it's not, all things are not fair, right? It does not always mean that you're going to get, um, and, it, and let me be clear, it never means that you're going to get 50% of whatever that contract is. But it does mean that you can get your piece of the pie out of what that project is and build your past performance so that as you're building that, now you become the company that's the head, the lead on the contract and not just the partner or the sub in that space. So it's a building process, but it's a valuable building process when, you know, if you, you put the time into it and you got the business to do that. Uh, um, well, I, got, I got one last question. What, what kind of okay. some of that that you said, is this for established businesses like James been uh, doing mm -hmm. his carpentry type stuff for a while now. He's good at it and now he's ready to you know, be marketable. Mm -hmm. But Or is it like, I got a good idea. Like I want to make no cone machines all across the, the city or something like that. Yeah. And I could, do I come to you and be like, how do I get this started? Stuff like that. So I am, I my company, we typically work with businesses that have been around about three years, at least three years. Um, and the reason for that is because when you're starting a business, um, lots of things come into play, right? You got you everything. It's like rose colored glasses. Everything looks so beautiful and you're moving through it and you're pressing through it, but you haven't really hit a lot of enough roadblocks to be able to know how to trust yourself and your instincts yet. And for what the services that we provide to small businesses, you got to be able to trust yourself. Like I can't call somebody up or, or reach out to somebody or help to cultivate a relationship. And as soon as you get there, you don't know what to say. Like when you get there, you got to talk. <laughs> you have to be able to sell yourself in that. So typically, you know, we don't work with, um, my company does not work with startups. We do training programs for startups, but like in group settings. So like individual business startups, we don't. Um, but for the certification process, um, you, you want to get it as soon as they offer it. Um, and when I was, we were talking about for the government, certification piece for DBE that it used to be you had to be a few years in business now you can get that done like a few months into your business so you want to do it the sooner the better the goal of these programs is for business development so the idea that you've been in business 10 years and now you're doing it is not exactly the, the premise behind it even though people do that I mean, so on the local or the state level, I mentioned the DBE certification, but then even on the federal level, you have something called 8A. And the 8A certification is really where it's at. Like there are, the 8A is where you start making, let me put it this way. Um, in 8A contracts, the a procurement officer, the person who gives out the contracts or you know signs off on the contracts for the federal government in different agencies, and there are over 300 government agencies, right? There are hundreds of them. Um, that person can just call you up and say, hey, Chance, I got a landscaping contract and uh, it's coming up and I want your company to have it. Like you are the one that we've been watching. You're the one that we know we've been paying attention to. We've been in touch and the opportunity is coming. We want you to have that. And you may not even have to bid on it. They just give it to you and they can give you a contract for up to $4 million, right? Four million dollars with no competition, and they can you can get that contract under this 8A program, or not that contract, but contracts like that for up to a hundred million dollars. So when you think about context of what that means, like you really need to be prepared to go into that, but you don't necessarily have to be all the way down the road. Like the 8A program, only you can only be in it for nine years. So you got nine years to like get in, make your money, and be able, and come out of it. So you may not, 
and it's a, it's a business development program like each of them are, but it takes you so much further when I talk about having the financial capacity or and capabilities to be able to, to sustain yourself. You got you don't have to have a million dollars in the bank because you can't be in the program if your personal ass if you are personally worth a million dollars. You can't have that. But you certainly can be in a position where you are building on this thing and moving it along. So you want to be in business a little bit, but not too far down the path. So as soon as those certifications are available to you, I would start to move forward in those. I wouldn't wait or delay that because the other thing that comes with the certifications is free training like if you didn't know if you don't even get any business out of being a dbe which a lot of people don't you know people hearing this or watching this may say i mean i'm certified i'm a dbe and i don't get any business but you should be taking advantage of the free marketing they give you for your state dbe programs and definitely in south carolina you can get up to fifteen hundred dollars worth of free training every year and it's a list of what those trainings may be. Or you can get, you know, if you don't have a logo, you don't know a marketing person and you have enough business cards, they will provide this as a free service for you once you're certified. So each of those programs operate like that. So you can go into them and benefit from those ways and then come out of them, you know, with several hundred thousand dollar, million dollar contracts. Does that make sense? Well, Slack ain't do it because he's he already much I mean that's so. exactly it takes him trying to be money. like Sly. Yeah. <laughs> he likes Sly he won't. <laughs> you ain't heard. I just asked Courtney for twenty dollars. <laughs> and I said I got you as long as I get forty back. You good for it. See, see women like you, I'm trying to keep y'all out of my life. <laughs> I think that's a poor decision. You should want women like me in your life. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm talking about the financial part. The, the look, you I, need, I need you in my life. I'm talking about the financial. We want to keep us flipping money. We want you want us to talk about it and know it real quick. I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, well, Courtney. Um, once again, we really we want to thank you so much for taking some time out. And talking to us, and, and I want to put your, um, I put your your credentials and everything back on the screen. But once again, for the people who, who are watching on spot or listening on Spotify or SoundCloud or uh, Google Podcasts, um, you can reach Courtney. She is the CEO of Foresight Communication. You can reach her at www.thinkfsc.com. That's Courtney Young at www.thinkfsc.com. And uh, you can reach her by phone at 803-261-4180. That's 803-261-4180. And, um, you know, fellas, you guys got any any uh, party things you want to say before we get out of here? Thank you very much for all the great information. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Hey, you just hooked us up, man. James been talking back and forth in our little group chat for the longest. I didn't know he knew how to do a dex like that. So he just made a business deal right there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> tell, tell him you want to a commission. <laughs> Don't worry, I might need a dick done too. <laughs> I got you. you know I got you. And I right. Got man, thanks, Courtney. For all the information and showing us how great Columbia High alumni are. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. If there's anything I can do, my phone number is there. My email is there. Text me, call me, send me an email. I'm happy to help. Even if my company can't take your project on or your business on, I'm happy to find or recommend someone who may be able to do that. And you know, all that I, I never gave out your email address. Your, her email was there. Yeah. yeah. C Young at thinkfsc.com. That's C Young at thinkfsc.com. And that's Courtney. Hey, um, this has been a great episode. This has been really enlightening to me. Uh, hopefully, our listeners and our viewers, hopefully, it's been enlightening to you. She is a wealth of information. Um, reach out, like she said, if she can't help you. She can put you in the right direction. And let's make some money. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to see people like, who look like me win. I'm, I'm just be honest with you. I don't want to see people who look like me win. So 
we yeah. thank you. We thank you so much for joining us on the RIP 28 podcast. And like we say on the RIP 28 podcast, we're a spot where we're just a bunch of fellas. We like to talk about a lot of things. Some of those things you may like, some of those things you might not like, but on the RIP 28 podcast, we're going to keep on talking about them because that's what we do. It's been wonderful. It's been beautiful. We'll talk to you next time on the RIP 28 podcast.